effectively. Started. Oh, we got a good game here. Got a new game. This is a uh, bonus game because I'm going to be away from my computer for a couple of days and won't be able to uh, upload any games. Maybe about four or five days, actually. <clears throat> so I'm hoping to get at least one win in <laughs> also. <laughs> I've been on a losing streak lately, so if I'm not going to post any games for a while. At least uh, maybe I can post a, a win here somewhere. Okay, so we're playing a open Sicilian. And uh, this is the key move to determine whether he's going into a, a night Arf or a classical variation. Oh, you know, he did a slightly different move order, and I didn't notice it. Normally, knight f6 comes out first, uh, hitting the pawn, and then knight c6. So in the move order he played, I could have I could have thrown in the move uh, uh, c4 and tried to set up a Roxy bind. But this is the uh, classical. Uh, let's go ahead and set up an English attack. Classical Sicilian. There's there's lots of attacking lines. The fischer sozin line goes with uh, bishop c4 here instead of uh, f3. <clears throat> with the plan of castling kingside. So, but I'm going to play queen d2 and castle queenside and try and... <clears throat> Keep maintain pressure on the d-pawn and look for attacking chances on the king side. That's that's the basic strategy here that I am following. And um, I don't know if that move h6 was really necessary. It does set up a... Um, a target for the bishop. <clears throat> so, for example, after he castles and I take, I get two pawns for the bishop and an open king side. It might be um, decent. It might be a decent sacrifice, although probably not sound unless uh, I can see some immediate follow up. I'm not saying. But when there's a pawn on h6, then this move um, g4, g5 <clears throat> comes quicker. It starts hitting on something sooner, one move sooner. So that way it speeds up uh, White's attack. Of course, these moves are sometimes necessary. I'm not saying it's always bad to play h6. Sometimes you need to keep a piece out of uh, the square. But there was no big threat at that point, so I don't think. So he's going to take my knight, maybe. Let's see, can I take his knight? It just brings his queen out. <coughs> but if he takes my knight and I take back, I have an open h-file here, which might be annoying. How about, um, you know, I could play, uh, I could take with the um, c-pawn and then play king to b1, just to keep my king side a little, a little tighter. So that's my plan. <clears throat> and if that's the case, I can. I don't have to move my king to b1 right away. I can wait and see if he takes first. Check. He did. Okay, <clears throat> so I hope that was good. Now he can pin the knight, but that's when I'll move my king to b1. So that's, that's happening almost immediately here, king b1. Um, and uh, he just moved his pawn away from that. There, let's, let's get out of that. Get off the c-file. I might even want to put my rook on c1, depending on what he does here. Um, the other thing I should be checking is, uh, can he push this pawn to d5? Pawn to d5, pawn takes, and yeah, I've got a clamp on that. <coughs> now, if I push to uh, g5 here, he doesn't have to take. Um, if he does take, who's better, actually? He takes, I take, he takes, I take, he has, he has enough force to stop me. And I can't yet play h4. Uh, His bishop can take it. And it doesn't appear that I can uh, lock in the bishop with a move like... Uh, 
<clears throat> okay, so let's put my rook on g1. Try and renew the threat of pushing on g4, g5. He blocks it. So now <clears throat> I could uh, play h4 anyway. Sack a pawn and open up the g-file. Is that any good? <clears throat> I'm not convinced. How about putting a bishop on c4? And maybe supporting a knight to uh, d5. Or if he takes, I take back with a pawn, and that might be a good pawn for me on um, on c4 there. Yeah. He can play the move. Um, <clears throat> he can play the move b5 immediately, hitting the bishop. Now, aren't I threatening? Maybe not. <clears throat> Sometimes you can play a move like bishop to uh, bishop uh, b6, hitting the queen, but his knight is guarding that square. Now, I could take his bishop. He takes my bishop, and uh, I can escape here. <clears throat> or I can just retreat my bishop. Let me play rook to uh, c1 here. Or maybe go back to the plan. Okay, so h h4 g takes h4, bishop takes h6 is an idea. <clears throat> he doesn't have to take, he could just let it sit there. And of course he would have a passed pawn, but I think I can blockade it and maybe even win it, so I'm not so worried about the passed pawn. And uh, his king being in the middle, I can be surrounding his king, trying to attack it from both sides. Aha, uh -huh. so he went to um, c6. Okay, let's try this idea with h4. Let's distract him on the other side of the board. I can jump back my knight to b here hitting his rook, but he just moves the rook again. I don't see that accomplishing anything. Um, I can't sink a piece on b6 because it's uh, well well defended, the square. I can steal this uh, dark squared bishop. <clears throat> oh, maybe that's what he's worried about, taking the bishop and then taking on uh, taking the bishop and taking on uh, d6 was an idea, perhaps. Okay, so he didn't take the bait. He didn't take the pawn. So I'm going to open it up. I need to have an open line. Another open line besides the C file, I think. Try and get in on the other side of the king. If I can get a rook to the seventh rank here, for example. If he takes with the f pawn, um, I can I can double up on the h pawn. Actually, even just uh, rook rook h one would immediately be threatening to win the pawn because the uh, h pawn would be pinned. <laughs> uh, no, no, the bishop's behind it. I take it back. But oh, h one, h two, h one again. Yeah. Um, so are there other plans here? No, bishop is still not going anywhere. That um, rook has some squares to go to. 
but I can't do both. So I can chase the rook away, or I can take the bishop, but I can't do both, so I can't win that d-pawn. And I may have, I'll have to look at that in the postmortem. I may have missed a chance to win that d-pawn at some point. So obviously I'm just going to double on the h-file. Maybe even triple. <clears throat> oh, now that's an idea. Uh, when he lifts his king, he allows for other other pieces to come in here and support the h file, or even he's supporting it with his king. Although that <laughs> that, may, that seems like a funny strategy to me, but maybe it's possible. Okay, he's supporting it with this king. Let's double here. <clears throat> uh, rook takes, rook takes, king takes, and then queen over with check. If the bishop was out of the way. Ah, oh, he goes for getting rid of my knight. Hmm. Now, if I take with the queen, uh, knight b6 or knight to uh, f6 chases the queen away. And if I take with the pawn, it also <clears throat> opens up this diagonal to his king. <laughs> so pawn takes seems like the move and hits his um, hits his rook, which can't go here to, uh, to attack the pawn. So where does the rook go? There, I think these squares are out. Two, three, four. Five, six, yeah, he's got those two squares to go to. So, um, check. Maybe check with the queen is more effective than checking with the bishop. He can't block, so the king will move, and then the queen could get in front of the uh, bishop here. Check. On a light square, and he uh, traded off his light squared bishop. So, if I were to go, for example, to this square, <clears throat> uh, he can chase me away. He can chase me away with a um, knight, no, with a rook. Okay, bishop takes is still not working. Queen here, and then um, knight to that square or that square. So let's try bishop. I'm just putting my bishop on uh, c2, just trying to set up a battery with the queen. If I can get my queen to this square, that might be pretty destructive. I can also move my rook to h5, put some more pressure on the g-pawn somehow. This um, dark squared bishop is not doing very much in the current position. Which is funny, all my pawns are on light squares over here, so this is the good bishop, but it's hitting against uh, dark uh, squared pawns of my opponent, and they don't seem to be weak enough that uh, that, that has any impact. Let's see, this uh, b6 square is still guarded. There is a7. So what I'm getting at is uh, if he plays his knight to... Um, Knight to c5 to attack my queen. I'll probably just trade. I'll probably just trade for it. Yeah, so he defended that indeed. Hmm, but that allows the queen to this square now. Because a rook can't come and harass the queen.
okay let's play that move anyway bishop c2 I have no squares immediately but um, it'll keep his pieces tied down and so maybe that's worth something and rook if I can get my rook to h5 and my queen to uh, d5 okay so maybe now he's he's letting go of something um, <clears throat> so bishop takes pawn takes our bishop takes, bishop takes, rook takes, pawn takes, rook takes, king takes, and um, it's not a mate there because uh, <laughs> because his bishop, his knight still covers that square. Hmm. <laughs> Maybe queen d2 to um, queen d2 to uh, h2, and rook takes, rook takes. Yeah, this pawn is not, not so easily defended at this point. Okay, um, a knight move. Where he's going to sink a knight into this square or this square. This is something I think would call for an exchange sack if he puts his knight here. Ah, oh, but is it really good? That's the question. Because that pawn is, uh, I wouldn't be getting a pawn for the exchange if he plays knight to uh, <clears throat> knight h4, rook takes, pawn takes, and then, um, yeah, there's there's nothing there. My, my rook is even kind of trapped there. Okay, let's guard this pawn. Here's an idea. I take the the knight, and then I play queen to um, d3, and he's no longer guarding these critical squares. Queen d3 first, and then take the knight. Okay, bishop there. So queen d3 hits this square and that square. Rook protects Black that one. forfeits on time. <laughs> okay, well, that was a time win, but uh, I was putting a lot of pressure on him, which is what you do um, when you're attacking. If you can't find an immediate breakthrough, you just try and increase the pressure. So anyway, I'll take a look at, the, at this in a post-mortem and see if I ever had any advantage in this game or if there was a winning move I overlooked and uh, see what the standing really was at the end uh, if there was for the time issue. Okay, so I uh, hope you guys are looking forward to that. I'll see you again later. Bye.